Sure. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us again for the Tuesday Crypto News with Telefriend. Uh, Telefriend is a crypto community, so I'm just going to quickly jump through what we do and why it's all about crypto. And oops, sorry. I'm just going to stop here. I need to. Say not finding the link. Bear with me one second. Sorry. Okay, so they will be jumping on. So yeah, very quickly and very briefly, who is Telefriend and what do we do? I'm not going to run through the full presentation, but I'm going to give you an overview because I see there's quite a few new people. Every Tuesday at two o'clock, we've got guest speakers and topics that we addressed in crypto community or in the crypto space. And ultimately, what we want to do is people know the current economy state is in dire straits and governments are just printing more money ultimately increasing inflation, the global debt is increasing. So what are we as the normal Joe Soap on the street have to do in generating more income? But at the heart of it is how do we do that safely? We know there's a lot of scams out there and scammers. So how do you invest your hard earned capital so that you can make sure that you are making or growing it and not according to the current economical state with the normal fiat banks? So why crypto? It's an alternative. It's, uh, it helps you grow your capital and actually, actually quite substantially with lots of the, the members that you can talk to in this community on what they're doing, anything from one to three plus percent per day on their initial capital input. Then there are many options for passive incomes. But the problem is what I said earlier, there are so many scams out there, you need to be really, really careful on where you put your money and who you give your money to. And that's why we've created this community is to help each other uh, avoid those pitfalls. We all know crypto adoptions or early adoption is over um, around the world. As we were talking earlier, more and more people are jumping into crypto because they're starting to see the value of it. And the adoption is now happening all over the show, even your bigger institutions is jumping in, as we heard the last couple of weeks from PayPal and a few other companies that is now enabling. Even a big shock for South Africa in the last, I think it's the last two weeks or the last week, where F&B um, and Binance is now linked and you can transfer or do the peer-to-peer -peer with your F&B wallet, buy and sell crypto through Binance and your F&B wallet, which was quite a big surprise. Then there's a constant growth. And with this constant growth, if you go and look at it, there's so many options that you can, and we'll chat about that in a little bit, and ultimately teaching you how to stay in control with your money. So how and where do you start? Somebody invited you to, you to, to this webinar today. Ask them uh, where and how you can get involved if you want to. But ultimately, it starts with education. The first thing is it doesn't help you just say it's a scam or think it's a scam or if you're not proper, properly educated in the space. And that's why we've got um, two of our biggest role players in this community talking to us today, which I'll introduce to you now. But yeah, do the Hotmart course, the Trendsuit course, the Master Trade course, courses, and I'll show you now where you can do that. Participate in the community. When we've got these Zoom calls, really ask questions, invite people to come and ask, um, and let's grow the, the community. When you hear of a crypto get together in your town, uh, join in, uh, come and meet people face to face and actually find out from real people where the support is and how they've changed their lives, getting into this kind of community and making money. Always research. There's so much more around the research that we can talk about, but don't just jump into something without doing proper research. And then what we do, and that's where our name comes from, is we tell our friends and we don't sell scams or uh, what's it, promote scams because we want our friends to stay friends. And that's ultimately why we stay in control. 
So there's three main things, actually four things that you can do in crypto, but for the purpose of these uh, Zoom calls, we talk about long-term trading, which is what Marius Landman do with his long-term reports, scalp trading, which is what Wendy teaches us and the community in terms of scalp trading by the minute, and then day trading. Companies like Trendseek and MasterTrade, who is teaching and giving you information on day trading. Know the difference. A lot of people make a mistake when they don't understand the three and they mix uh, long-term signals with day trade signals and vice versa of scalping. Get the training. That's the education before you start and really put in the effort and you will be very pleasantly surprised how your money do grow. If you jump in just because you think you know what you're doing without proper training and proper support, you are going to lose your money or you will most probably lose your money eventually. And have a strategy and know when to take your profits. And that's what we, you will be taught and shown and assisted with in the various communities. So on the To Know It marketplace, which is great. To Know It has really done a phenomenal job over the last couple of months by bringing in the new binary system that they've got. A lot of people hear binary or they see the structure that they are building teams and they think it's a pyramid scheme. It is not. It's just products that they've researched, evaluated, and they're making it available for people who's involved in crypto to just further expand their knowledge and get into support groups like this. But at the same time, you don't need to just pay for uh, the products. You can actually earn by telling a friend or inviting other people to start doing that. But for today, we're not going to jump into all the courses and the matrix of how to know it works. We will have another call for that. We actually want to get to the real reason why we're here today. And that is, let me just get back to this slide. And that is Marius and Wendy. Are they online yet? No, they're not. Okay, so they're still busy with their call. Let me just check. Anybody has got any questions so far? Or got something they want to add as to what we do and your experience as we wait for Marius and Wendy to jump on? Well, that's an interesting one that Davi says there. I can't pronounce that surname. The government investment today said that the country's pension funds are sitting on a big pool of liquidity and are now being beginning to explore investment in infrastructure. So yeah, that is a very good indication what we've been saying a couple of months back, that our pension funds in South Africa is in very dangerous territories. I do apologize uh, for the 10 minutes running into it, but Wendy just said she will jump in now, she and Marius. Just we'll tell us what, what, happens oh, in a day, what happens in a day with Diavolt. <laughs> what, how do you start, it's, Diavolt? What time do you get up? Easy. At 3 in the morning or, well, or, or only 10 easy. in the morning? What time do you get up? Between 3 and 10. Then I have a cup of coffee. <laughs> It depends on yeah. how soon the telephone starts ringing. Okay. And I'm typically either on a call like this or I'm on a telephone. And that's pretty much the day. Is that not why? Uh, do you always have earphones in? That's, or do you actually... that's what somebody said. Yeah, I need to take out oh. my earphones. Yes, not leave them in permanently. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, no, it's a very boring, boring life. No, no it's not boring. Um, I speak to people constantly um, and it is, it's really sad how broken the world is actually out there. And that's why these communities are so awesome. Uh, the support that the people are getting, that's the other nice thing that's coming out is people wouldn't be able to survive this without the community. No, I don't believe you can trade without a community. No, you can't. No. Hello, dear Hello, uh, we're here. Hello, Marius. Hello, Wendy. Welcome. Thank you Sorry, for joining us. No, no problem. We know you guys are busy. Uh, thank you for taking time to come and talk to us and answer a couple of questions and just tell people what it's like. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing.
So when you do <laughs> talk, people can actually see you. All right, Marius and Wendy, many of you know them already. Uh, for those of you who don't know them, Marius is most probably the number one long-term forecaster, what's it, predictions or forecast in crypto, uh, anything from Bitcoin to the top 40 coins. And so far, his calls has been absolutely phenomenal the last year. Uh, really, really good calls there, Marius. Um, and then, yeah, Wendy is the scalp trading. So it's two complete different sides of crypto trading. Now, I don't know who wants to go first, Marius, you or Wendy. Where did it all start? I, I think what we do, we don't start first, but uh, we, we just do it like together, <laughs> Wendy. As I said to Wendy, no, we'll, we'll do it together, you know. I mean, Wendy, Wendy talks better than me. She's, she smiles better. She looks better. So, <laughs> no, we, we started a long time ago. It was actually really funny. You know, I, I worked at that time in the oil and gas industry, and I still do work in the oil and gas industry as a consultant, but I only work for the larger companies like Shell, BP Woodside, Halliburton, Slumberjay. So more at that level where we do the high level work for them. So what I did is, oh, look at my cat. Look at the cat has decided he wants Come to be to in there too. Yeah, he's, yeah, the big one. So a few years ago, we were just like everybody else. We, we, we had a lot of debt. You know, we just built a new house. We were going on holidays and we just had a lot of debt, but you in that rut, you know, where you, you work and the money you make covers the expenses and you work more and you spend more time at work and you work, 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 work. And, and you as a family, husband and wife, you say, oh man, we need some time together. And then suddenly you plan all of that, you go away, you come back and you work, work, work. So you're kind of like in a rut. And during that time, what happened here in 2016 and 2017, I, I was investing in gold and silver and just trying like any other normal guy, uh, just to make some extra money. You work, you invest your money. And we took some really bad knocks, you know, on gold, silver, and then we invested in gold mining and we made some money there. So it's constantly, you know, the money that we made and the money we lost would have even out. You could have just set your money in the bank, you know, and we, we thought, man, yes, this is like terrible. You know, just trying to make some money. So little did I know that be behind my back here, Wendy started investing in Bitcoin. Now, I invested in Bitcoin as well. I heard about it a uh, year in 2013, 14, I invested in it. But in Australia, there was a, on the ASX, on the Australian exchange, was a company that mined Bitcoin and I bought shares in that company. And as Bitcoin grew, we made money. My first Bitcoin was bought at $235. I went to my $260, I sold. I went like, man, yes, this is smart. I'm the smartest guy in the world. And then again at 400, it went to 500, I sold again. And then we just had that run up where, so, where Bitcoin went to a thousand and it outperformed gold at that point. And I, I cashed out and I made a little bit of money, 10, 20, 30%, I don't know, but not much, but I thought I was smart. And then obviously Bitcoin came down and on that downtrend there, I forgot about Bitcoin. I didn't think much about it. I was busy with other stocks silver, gold, <clears throat> gold miners, <clears throat> because I believe that's where the big money is going to be. But one day, Wendy and I, we were just lying in bed and uh, just going to bed at that night. And she looked at the phone and she was just laughing about, and I said, what are you laughing about? You know, and she was just giggling and giggling and giggling. And she told, I said, show me. And she showed me, she invested in some coins, Bitcoin and a whole bunch of other coins. And I looked at the profits that she's, she's made. I was astonished. I went like, man, yes, I married the right wife here. And, you know, it was crazy. And that is actually where, where we really started getting into Bitcoin big time because my eyes opened. One of the coins, for example, that she bought was XVG and that coin went up um, 34,000%. And for me, that was, uh, you well, know, fine. extraordinary money. So, I always wanted to buy a, a nice car, so I took the money she made and I bought a, a car with that money. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I and don't know, Wendy, you can probably tell yeah, the rest was, of the story. Yeah, but, so, um, Wendy, how much of that is all the truth? So, actually, 
you started all of this, Wendy. So it's all your fault that we're sitting here today. <laughs> yeah, I I got into um, Bitcoin. Actually, I got into the altcoins a whole lot more than I did Bitcoin. But the story is pretty true that Maria said. But what really happened was behind the scenes was I needed money. We're like everybody else. We were on a tight budget. We have kids. We're doing life. We're, you need to put your mic off because it's echoing. Thank you. And um, we Please have kids try. at private school. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, baby. <laughs> and we have kids in school and we were struggling. And so, and I needed to go back to the States to see my, my, my family. And it was just one of those things that we were trying to budget to get a house at that particular time. And money was tight, you know, just, we're not like any, you know, just like everybody else. So I took my tax refund money and I took some money that Marius gave me to buy my plane ticket. And I just knew that it was going to be a struggle to go back home and not have a whole lot of money to spend. You know, when you go back to the States, you want to shop because everything's on sale. And, and I wanted to bring back a bunch of stuff and I didn't have a lot of money to, to have. So I decided, how am I going to make my, this money turn into money? And I knew that I had to buy my ticket early to get a discount, but I invested all that money in, in altcoins. And I started sure. picking a whole, I, I, I did. I invested every single bit of it because I said, well, I've got a couple months. I got, I got some time. Let me see if I can make some money. And I invested it in Verge. So that's, that was a, a win-win. And that's why I started laughing because I had to tell Marius at that particular time that I, what I had done with the money. And I had told him, I said, well, there's some, I have some good news and some bad news for you. And he <laughs> said, what? He said, you're laughing. So I'm assuming it's good news. And I said, well, it is good news. But I said, I need more money for a plane ticket. And he's like, you spent that money? What did you do with that money? You don't tell me you lost that money. <laughs> and I said, well, no, I said, I invested it. But I said, now I can hand my portfolio over to you and you can keep it. Or I can cash it all out right now and use that for a plane ticket. But I was very emotionally attached to every single one of my little altcoins. And I didn't want to give them up. And so Marius looked at it and it's exactly what he said. He said, you made this much money? You made how much money? Because he was in Bitcoin, Litecoin and Ethereum. He was in the big ones and I was in a lot of the little ones. And he saw that I well outperformed him. And so that was kind of a knock for him that I could actually do that. And he said, you actually did this on your own. You actually figured out how to buy a wallet. I said, yeah, it wasn't that hard. And uh, he was really kind of proud of me, but he said, yeah, no, I'll take your portfolio over. You just, here's, here's the money for a plane ticket, <laughs> you know, have a nice flight. <laughs> so that's kind of how it, how it happened. Uh, but on the sad story was when I came back, he had sold all of my altcoins and I nearly had, I nearly had a meltdown. I tell you what, I really did. Was it he, at least in a, in a profit? Yeah, he was, but it was, I was so emotionally attached to these coins yeah. and, you know, and he, but you know, the truth of the matter was I learned a lot when Marius got into to crypto pretty heavily because of the fact I learned not to get emotionally attached to the coins. It's about making the profit and learning how to farm the coins and, and buy and sell on the highs and the lows was, a, was an eye opener for me. And from there, we just um, we knew that this was working for both of us, and we were making a lot more money in crypto than we ever did in any of our other investments. So um, Marius and I, we just had a long talk about it, and we came together as a couple and um, you know husband and wife, and we decided that we were going to go all in, and that's exactly what we did. Um, don't recommend that to everybody, but you know that was just what we decided to do is both of us were working. We both had full-time jobs. I was a business operations manager for um, a non-for-profit company and I was working long hours and Marius was too. Marius was traveling with his job as well. But we decided that if we had to, if we lost everything in crypto and we took the gamble and we, we, could, we could both make it because we both had full-time jobs. So we decided just to go all in and we put everything we had in crypto and it paid off. That's our story. So, well, where where did the long term report start, or where did that come in? When did you start that membership? I'll let Marius tell you on that. But basically, it was when 
uh, he started seeing how much money we were making in crypto. He decided to learn, like Marius is a perfectionist and he probably wouldn't want me telling you that, but we he is, he, he, he thrives at everything that he puts his hands on because he de he's determined to know it like the back, he, he wants to know it better than anything in anybody. So if he finds out you're an engineer he, and he's gonna have a meeting with you, he will read up on being an engineer and he will know. <laughs> a lot before he meets with you. So with crypto, he wanted to know everything that he could possibly know about crypto. And from there, he started giving reports and financials. But Marius, I'll let you tell your story. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be quick on that. It's not um, it's not that difficult, really. What happened is I was working in the oil and gas industry at that time. And I'm famous for developing a, the only algorithm in the oil and gas industry that we use to identify future fatalities near misses or incidents. And the way that we did it was I looked at, for example, Shell, you know, when they drill for oil and gas and drilling and completions, they would, for example, use a certain document, which is called the SOP or a work method statement. The SOP is a standard operating procedure. And they would follow that process every single time when they do a certain task or an event. Now, they can only have a fatality, a near miss or incident if something goes wrong. That is not in that SOP, like a, a event that wasn't planned for. But in your work method statement, you work out the elements, weather, you know, fatigue, all that kind mm. of stuff. And then you can plan ahead for, so that there's not a fatality, a near miss or incident. So what I did is we looked back the last 60 years and said, okay, right, if Shell did, in the last six years, work with this SOP, because remember in the oil and gas industry, everything's the same. You drill the same, you do the same work, same machinery. They, they change a little bit now with technology, you know, but although they don't use a lot of technology, actually well, when they drill for oil and gas, because you have to make them intrinsically safe, otherwise it will <laughs> explode the gas, you know, all mm. these little fine parts at work. <clears throat> but we had a look at, the last 60 years and said, okay, right, where were the fatalities near misses incidents? When did it happen? Why did it happen? All that questions. We plotted it down on a, a software that uh, I developed, which is developed in Python, uh, the, the Python script software uh, with three other scripts. We wrote it. So what we had to do is to input all the data and it took a lot of time to go through it and look at all that. And uh, then we realized that, wait a second, there's a certain graph, you know, it would go for six months and then there's a fatality in the MS for incident and then it would drop. Then six months again, you know, for example, I'm not saying six months, but certain intervals. <clears throat> and when we plotted it out over a 60 year period, we saw there's a pattern that's developing. And then we could take that pattern and said that, wait a second, in the next four or five years or three months, four months, there's gonna be another fatality. A fatality is when somebody dies mm. or a near miss or an incident. For example, like, uh, you know, the mast is the highest part of a rig or a drill rig for oil and gas on the land rig. Somebody may work on the top there, leave a spanner up there, the rig vibrates, you walk past it and the spanner falls on your head or it misses you, you know, those kind of stuff. So there were a lot of things that we plotted there. And then we went back to the oil and gas companies that I did work for and we said, look, there's going to be a probability that you are going to have a fatality in June or July. And they said, how many? And we said 1.86, probably two. And lo and behold, they didn't take much note of that. You know, they paid us to do all the work and came June in a certain year. Oh, I think it was about 2012 or so, 2013, 14, somewhere around there. And uh, this specific company had a fatality right on target, exactly what we said, when, where, how they were working bank. It happened and they took suddenly note and we protected the next fatality by implementing certain measures, next fatality didn't happen. We then told them that, listen, the next fatality near miss or incident will be in December. And they, and lo and behold, it did happen. But uh, so we gained really fame for that. When I saw what happened in cryptocurrencies, when Wendy started looking at that and made all this money, I had to look at all the chart patterns for the last 10 years or as far back as what I could go at that time. I think at that time we could only go back about seven or eight years. But I also had data of Bitcoin being traded, a mock mm. trade about nine months before Bitcoin was released, guys. This is really incredible. 
somebody sent it to me from, from a government website in America. The, you could see it was from a government website. We've got the data. So somebody must have traded that before they released it. Anyway, we looked at that nine, nine months data, extrapolated that over 12 months. And then I broke out every single year and looked at how the chart patterns work. And I found a mathematical algorithm. You have to have this uh, code to work out what the patterns will do and what the markets will do. So we were fairly accurate in 2017. We called the high in 2017. The only people in the world that I know of that have called it, many people claim they did, but when you look at the, you know, they can't find it. And we had members at that time that uh, we told them get out at 19,500, the market will drop to 12,000. And nobody believed it, but our members got out. We came back, bought at that time. Now in 2017, and I just want to mention for people on the call here, you know, I think we were just a little bit lucky. We caught that wave up in 2017. And then when we hit that top and we realized that we are correct, remember there was no, no market manipulation up till about April, the 10th of April, was the first time when ETFs came in the market and bang, our algorithm went haywire for mm -hmm. a whole year and a half. It's only now that we have figured out how these ETFs work, how they manipulate the market, that our calls now are being better now again, because we had to work hard for a year and a half to figure out what the heck is going on here. Believe it or not, it's manipulated big time. So you just need to be patient. Now, in 2017, we made a lot of money. In 2018, as the market came down, we saw that downtrend and we made 518% gain in 2018. But guess what, guys? In 2019, it was a disaster. I mean, that was a disaster of a year. And this whole year as well is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. If you haven't made a lot of profit, it's not the end of the world. Because 2019 was a difficult year. You know, we barely made a um, big profit, you know, because you, you would make the profit, but then the market would suddenly just drop and you would lose the money. And then you sit on the bottom, you're caught in the trade and you have to wait till it goes up again. Similar to what happened here with the coronavirus drop. Remember, coronavirus came here on 12 February and that drop uh, just suddenly dropped out of nowhere. The world stock markets dropped and 90% of people were caught in the trade. And it's only now, remember, we were at 12 or 13,000 Bitcoin dropped. It's only now that many people that held on to their cryptos are now back to that same level nine months ago or six months ago, or whatever the time frame is. So it's not the end of the world. You know, you've lost about six, seven, eight months. You're back there. Now the future is going to be better. You know, Bitcoin will go up mm -hmm. to a, a different level. Markets will turn around. It's going to come down again. But what we did is we, um, Diewald, we, we took the same algorithm analysis and software that we used in the oil and gas industry. I plotted all that into the data. And in 2017, we were the first people in the world that came out with a paid members group. And now we have grown to over about 35,000 people all around the world, the largest in the world now. Uh, and then we also set up, obviously, as you know, TAF, this is mm. this company now, uh, to know it. In to know it, you get paid for referring people. Because Wendy and I said, well, we've really become financially free, but let's help other people make money as well. If you want to grow the business, and just remember, guys, you know, when we started this, I literally worked 20 hours every single day. But I you slept still do. <laughs> uh, I do it because I do it because I like it. You know, remember, uh, it's about helping other people. You know, mm. many people know that I grew up in an orphanage. When I tried to get out of that, um, let's say, poor mindset, Stigma. you start from nowhere. There's nobody to help you. So I know what it takes to get from that level to the next step and go higher and higher and higher. It's all about helping other people now. And this is what we are trying to do. No, that's fantastic, Marius. Um, I mean, it's incredible where it's come from and where it's going. Um, but just a, a quick last question, and then we'll get a bit more personal. Uh, why did you not go into scalping or Wendy into long-term trading? That's, that's a question that I get quite a lot. Why the two well, extremes? The, well, the thing is this, you know, remember when I plotted the data on my software, I initially designed it for to have a look and see what will happen in the next year. Mm. And then I brought it back to what will happen in the next month and then what will happen in the next three weeks. I actually worked in a two-week cycle to see what it's going to do. And 
I realize that scalp trading is going to be very difficult. I would rather want to buy at the low and sell at the high. Mm. And I always tell people that, look, don't do day trading. It's not going to work. You can, it's the fastest way to lose money. And at that point, it was. It was a great way for you to lose money. And it was a great way for you if you do skull trading to lose money up till Wendy came and yep. showed me that I'm wrong. And I said one day and I looked at the money that Wendy was making just in an hour quickly, you know, she was making $30 here, $50 there, you know, $100 there, $200 here. And suddenly by the end of the week, it counted up and she made $2,000. And all I do is I see her lying in the sun, swimming in the pool. And I was wondering, what, how do you make this money? You know, so then I realized that while it took me a bit of time to realize this and only about a year ago when she built this membership up with Karen and, you know, Teresa and everybody, I was really anti that because, uh, yeah, I am telling people invest long term and she's doing the scalp trading and she's growing a membership and nearly taking over my membership. And <laughs> so, so I had to, I had to look into it, but I tell you what, when I sat down and had a good look at it. I went like, man, this is something that people can do. That's you don't job, yeah. need, yeah, you don't need a hundred thousand mm. dollars. And I suddenly, my eyes opened. And I said, man, we are for the people. Somebody with $500 can do this. Mm. You trade, you make a bit of money. And then when you convert that US dollar into a, a South African rand, it becomes big money. And this is where we want to go, where we want to help people. So that is actually the whole story. And then obviously day trading, day trading is good provided you have experts. Mm. It's very difficult to make day trading calls, but that's why we have stop losses. It's kind of like if you, anyway, day trading is working, scalp trading is yeah. working, and then long-term trade. We recommend percentage split it up between the three models. No, exactly. No, that's, yeah, that's what Wendy and the, the guys in the trend seek and master traders teaching the people. Um, now, a quick one. Which one of you are making the most coffee per day for the other person? <laughs> No, I Wendy. Make, Wendy makes I the make best coffee. coffee. I make the coffee. Are you making the coffee? I make the coffee. Yeah. Oh, so you he are makes the bed and he does the dishes. <laughs> uh, it's a fair trade. And then Marius, the your hat. Why always a hat? Is it your hair or is it something in the oil and gas? <laughs> I yes, I just like I just like my hat. When you <laughs> go to the beach. Uh, we wear the hat and, uh, you know, I just love it, you know. So, yeah, then on a, on a last note, I know you, it's late that side. Um, I've basically got okay. one more question. And then for people that's on the call, you're welcome to raise your hand. We're not going to, depending on how many people wants to ask a question, we're not going to go into market discussions. Um, I might have a question for Marius. But on the last side, from my side, what does a typical day look like in Morris, you do your commercial work still, and then you've got the, uh, you must have your hands full because these reports must keep you busy. And I know you're involved with the Know It and all uh, the other platforms. Uh, so what does a typical day look like for you and Wendy? How do you guys juggle the balls and where do you take time off? Well, Wendy's probably the hardest worker that I have ever seen and she's constantly busy with something. But, uh, but look, the thing is this, we find time to do things. You have to remember that the old saying, if you want to get something done, give it to somebody that is the busiest in the office. Because some people will always want to have excuses. Some people can get things done. Now, all of us here on this call are people that get things done. That's why we're mm -hmm. on this call. But you can still manage your kids. You can still go back to work. You can still go and cut the lawn after this. But other people will say, oh, I haven't got time you know, to get on the Zoom call, but then call them now and you'll probably find them sitting on a couch somewhere or doing something that is not really that important. Yeah. I'm not talking bad about people. I'm just saying that is the mentality of people. But Wendy and I, we have got the ability to be busy, to manage our time properly. And to be honest with you, I've got so much free time in the day. I play with a cat. You know, here's my cat. He, there he is, you know. He wasn't and, saying um, too loud. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we've got time to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. We're always busy. And I think Wendy pushes me a little bit. I push her. That's basically it, you know. Right. And the other thing is, if you love what you do, yeah. it becomes really easy. So, now you guys, 
Yeah, Wendy, who catches the biggest fish? The obvious ask you, who's, who's the better ang ang angler, fish fanger? I used to be, I don't know what happened, but when we came over here to Australia, he's been knocking it over the fence. We haven't fished in quite some time. He was analyzing the waters. <laughs> he analyzed the fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, when we first met, that was, he had to pass that test, whether he, he knew how to fish or not. He didn't know that at the time when we were dating, but uh, if he didn't know how to fish, he wasn't going to make the cut. <laughs> and uh, so the, the very first, one of the first dates that we had, I took him with my dad and we went surf fishing in the Gulf and uh, I had to see if he would get his big feet in the water and go in and go to the second or third sandbar if he had enough <laughs> guts to do that. And he outfished me in front of my dad. So uh, that was a sign that he was a keeper. When He's he a South African. Me. What do you expect? South Africans can fish. <laughs> well, he kept telling me that, but <laughs> I, you know, there weren't very many people that could outfish me. And the thing is, I usually don't catch very many. I just catch the biggest and I just wait for the biggest one. And I just tell them that, you know, you can catch a hundred fish, but who's going to talk about the hundred fish catch they're going to talk about the big one and so all I cared about was <laughs> one big fish but yeah no we have fun when we when we try and get away and we do a little holiday that's what we like to do is relax but a day cool. in the life here is is can be different every single day some days uh, a lot of people know I give the course for the huddle knot so I'm up at five yeah, on the on the call at six and my day starts and it doesn't sometimes finish till one in the morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I need nano naps. Sometimes we just go full on like we did today. So today's been a full day since five o'clock in the morning and I'll do it again tomorrow. It's just, it's, it, but then, you know, then I have a, a week where sometimes we'll sleep in till eight o'clock, nine o'clock. That's sleeping in for us. And, uh, you know, some, sometimes we, we do things different. Sometimes we'll go meet clients for coffee. Um, I don't know. We just, we're working a lot. Uh, when Mario sometimes has calls with his clients or he's working or he's, uh, he's away, I'm in the office. And then sometimes we swap off because, you know, you have to have a little break. <laughs> you know, sometimes I go shopping or I go get my errands done when, when he's doing a recording. And uh, it's just nice since COVID actually that we both get to work from home. No, so, so there's definitely go... hope for us. Yeah. So it's it's fun. We we both enjoy crypto, but we we do it a little different. And with scout trading, yeah, I had to put up with that on his on his webinars for the longest time. And I don't know if you guys realized it, but almost every single webinar he used to say uh, make some slide comment about uh, yep. you know don't don't be a, a day trader. You know you're going to lose your money. And every single time he was, he, I, I knew he was telling me. You know, yeah. you're going to lose your money. You're going to lose your money. And how I got into scalp trading was basically um, the fact that long-term trading was too slow for me. You know, we live in a fast food world. Everybody wants a hamburger now. They don't want to wait. And it's the same thing with cryptos. And I think that's why the interest is in scalp trading is because everybody doesn't like to sit around and wait for two years from now to be a millionaire. They want to be a millionaire today. Mm. Unfortunately, for Marius, because he, he does bigger money, you can find out that there's not very much liquidity in a lot of these little altcoins. And you can't yeah. put big money. If he came in with $100,000 and slapped it down on wing, um, you know, that thing would wing. go ballistic. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not a problem buying the coin. It's a problem mm. selling it at a profit. So while he can't do that, um, but for a lot of us, if you can scalp trade with a thousand to two, three, five thousand dollars, you can make a substantial good living from home with a smaller amount of money on a lot of these coins. And so I figured out that uh, if I just did a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, before you knew it, I was making more than I was making as a business office manager. So it became a full time job for me then. So that's, that's how I got into it. And that's also where Hodlots basically came from. Your your course is for specifically for single moms and housewives who wanted the extra income. That's basically where it all started. When you realize you can do it, uh, you can teach others. And that's why the yes. Hodlots. But now saying that, it doesn't mean us men can't be part of it too, because we scalp too. Yeah. I know we have a lot of excellent men scalpers, you know, and a lot of them are on the call here today. 
<laughs> today. So yeah, there, matter of fact, Frank, Frank O, I don't know if he's on the call or not. He's he holds the record for the first scalp. I think he's that was the longest. Long time. Yeah, he two hundred percent. He just said it, it was so funny because he got on the next day after the course and he said, um, "I'm not sure I did this right, but I, I, you know." And I said, "What what did you do, Frank?" And he said, "Well, he said I made two hundred percent profit." And I went, no, that can't be, no, 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 it's okay. Let, let's let's refigure that. And sure enough, he made 200% profit. He said, what happened was I started scout trading and he said the coin never came down. And it did, it was one of those slow and steadies and it, it just kept going and going and going and, and until it, it started tanking and he just stayed with it the whole way. I said, Frank, you did perfect. <laughs> you know, so, so far he's the best one there no he was i remember that one um yeah. okay so your points i know it's very late and we want to get you guys rested um but if anybody's got questions for marius or wendy you're welcome to raise your hand and uh we'll open it up for you but last question from my side marius and then wendy you can also answer the same one yeah. your tip for anybody who's not in crypto yet um for those who believe crypto is a scam what's what's your response when somebody tells you crypto is a scam and can i make money and what should i do if i want to start making money in crypto yeah the thing is this you know when we started here in 2016 and 17 a lot of people said it's a scam but you won't hear that anymore right now it's very odd that people will call it that because there's enough evidence now that PayPal is supporting cryptos or Bitcoin. Billionaires are now starting to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is going mainstream. And all I can say to those people is that I, I think many there, there's no nobody really that tells me it's a scam anymore. But what they come, they they ask me, listen, tell me a little bit more about cryptos. And what we need to do is just to educate those people a little bit and get them to buy a small amount, you know, let's say a hundred dollars worth of cryptos because the education process is you have to set up a wallet mm -hmm. and people don't understand that. But when we use terms like, look, we have to set you up with a bank account, you do it online, set you up with a bank account. Now you're gonna have a bank address, like your bank account number, that's your wallet. And we just call it your wallet that you put in your pocket, this is your wallet address. And we just explain it to people like that. We say, look, I'm gonna help you and show you what to buy. And then I'm gonna show you how to secure it and never give this information out to anybody. And when people get that, they understand that. And you know, I just sat with people on a call yesterday. It was uh, Dr. Tell, it's a person that's been with us now for years. And he had eight new people there. And we went through and we showed one guy never even heard about cryptos. He just said, they just told him, sure. listen, be on a call. We're going to show you about something. And after we explained it to him, he was like, what? I've been missing this for four or five years. You know, I wish I got in a long time ago. And he was so thankful that we told him about it. You know, I don't really see people calling it a scam anymore. Mm. Uh, I think those days are over now. And all I can say, the last tip for people that are on the call here is that Look, I believe that 2019 and this year as per se, we had really, really tough years. But you are going to see that the two tough years are going to turn into probably three. I reckon about three multi-month good years. The same model that happened in 2016, 2017 is going to happen again, but it's going to take about the three-year upwards move. You're going to make a lot of money and you can make even a lot more money if you buy low, sell high, or use scalp trading to make money. So I see, I see a really good future here, guys. I really do. Awesome, thanks, Morris. I and don't know Wendy, about you, Wendy. Yeah, I'm ready. We're ready. What's we your are... last last advice? Do the hollow knots course. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I see. A good promo for me, but now, in all honesty, you'd be surprised. But there's a lot of people here in Australia who have never heard of crypto. You mm -hmm. would think that that was shocking, but there's a lot of people that I say they ask me what I do for a living, and I say I do crypto, and they go, "What's that?" I'm like, "Seriously, you don't? They don't a, a Bitcoin? They go, uh, Bitcoin? Oh, is that really real?" 
I'm like, seriously. Okay, so for those people who are in Australia that might be on this call, all the banks are on. You know, we've got so many uh, outlets that we can use and wallets and things, but South Africa is turned on, you know, really, really well. And they lead the pack by far in, in, in that. But we've got USA coming on board now. They have a lot of restrictions, but we can get through them. And, uh, you know, it's legal to trade this. We just all need to learn how to do it and, and to do it with the less risk. And that's what we teach. We teach you guys how to do it, but definitely get involved. What we're finding now with the HODL knots, it actually is that we're, we're taking on a lot more university and college students right now, believe it or not. And this is exciting me because a couple of them, um, I don't know if they're on the call yeah, tonight. Yeah, Ruan is on here. Is she? Uh, Rani? Ronnie? No, Ruan. Ronnie. Ruan. Ruan is? Ruan yeah. is. Ruan for yeah, you? Okay. But Ronnie is also on, and she's a student, and she is saying how much she, you know, loves the fact that uh, she can do this while she's studying. So she doesn't have to have a part-time job going out doing other things. I mean, she may still have one, but what I'm saying is, is you, you can learn how to scalp trade and she is just taking the course and she's learning how to do this so that she can profit while she's just doing her studies. And mm -hmm. then she can take more time out and, and do her studying, but she could be scalp trading on the side while she's studying. And so we're finding that this is a really good alternative for that and stay and with COVID, uh, a lot of people were hurting, you know, the farmers are hurting. There's a lot of people who lost their jobs or businesses uh, have been attacked. And so this has been a really good way to supplement their income. Uh, a lot of them are real emotional when they, when they trade because of that, but we work with you on that. Mm -hmm. And so we make sure that you, you get that support that you need, but yeah, as far as getting in crypto, it's, it's the only way. It's the only way. I see the reason. <laughs> the only way. Got two questions and then we will let you go if you want to go. Um, Teresa, surprise, you've got yes, your hand up. Mar I do, Mar um, dear Walt. I'm good luck like that now. Marius, um, just a question. Who wins with darts the most? Because we only hear Wendy's version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wendy, Wendy beats me really Man badly. down. Oh, okay. So she's telling the I truth. Mean, no, for some reason, I mean, she just throws these triple twenties <laughs> and the bull. I mean, I don't understand how she does that, but it's, uh, it just mesmerizes me. So I'm off darts for a bit. I know he hasn't been playing in a while. He gave up. I know. Oh no! <laughs> I even bought him some really good darts. I mean, some really high dollar, nice darts. I know, but that's that's where the first place is wrong. You bought the darts, Marius. I know. That's what he said. That's what he said. He need he needs some South African flags on his darts. That's what he needs. It's all yeah, but the good. problem is, um, <clears throat> Wendy's sister came over one day, so we play darts, uh, and then she beat us both. She's never played darts, but she beat us both. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> stuff. Know. Marty, yeah. you've got your hand raised. Yeah, I just want to ask uh, Marius. He said in one of his uh, one of his calls, uh, the coin won. It was the coin of the day. Is it still a long term coin, or should we get rid of it? Oh, WIN. No, sure, that is a great coin. You know. Um, Remember, there are coins that I hold long term. I don't even sell them. <laughs> and those coins are WAN, W A N, WAX, A G I, and there's a whole bunch of other coins actually. I'll probably maybe put it in the, in the report next time of the coins that I just hold long term. And what I do whenever I make profit in scalp trading, because I've succumbed now, you know, I. I take a thousand dollars and I try to hear and there and I just kind of is like this, follow what Wendy does. Is this recorded, it's Wendy? Recorded is this recorded and it's public. <laughs> it's gonna go all over the world. Marius Lantman scalp trades. <laughs> and, and then I take the hundred or two hundred dollars profit that I make here and there because I look over Wendy's shoulder when she doesn't see what when I'm looking, and then I know what coin she she's she makes money every time. I don't know how she does it. But anyway, so then what I do, that $100, $200 that I do, I know it's small amounts of money, but it's valuable money. Mm. <clears throat> I take that and I buy, buy WAN, WAX, AGI, a whole bunch of other coins like NEO and stuff, you know? Because remember, that $100, 
When this market goes up 6,000%, 7,000, 10,000, go and work it out mm -hmm. what that $100 is worth. And I can care less if I buy WAN and WAN drops another 50% and then another 50%. I'll buy, 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 buy. Remember, guys, at one point, you guys know our long-term analysis. We, we are calling for a big... I don't want to mention it here, but anyway, yeah. uh, just look in the reports what we call for. But um, when this market eventually starts breaking out and we will have that data, you're going to, yeah, the money will be enormous and you want to have as much WAN, WAX, AGI as what you can afford. No, that's brilliant. No, I thought it was going to be impossible. Um, I should have actually taken a bet how long it's going to be before we talk markets, um, having Marius Lampen on the call. But yeah, um, for those who don't know what Morris is talking about, that's the long-term trade reports um, that you can get on the platforms, whoever invited you here, or if you don't know how to get access, let me know. We will help you, the Honnot scores, um, all those kind of reports. You need that to really trade and make a success in crypto. It's nearly impossible to do it on your own. Um, many of us here has actually tried it and lost money. So yeah, Marius, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us today and for your time. And it's nice to find out that you are human beings too, um, because it seems yeah, it's like- It's nice to find out he's scalp trading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never I was look. wondering why he was getting up and while I was doing my courses, the last couple of courses, he was listening. He's he, never he was gonna trying this to learn. Down. Yeah. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> <In> <laughs> it's case, all good. Yeah, so thank you very much for, for showing us because it seems like you guys are online 24 seven. And yeah, the market is tough. The market is tough. And just thank you for what both of you are doing. I mean, your heart, Marius, what you can charge for your reports per month is ridiculous, insane. If I look at what some of the other people are doing and how you're doing it at the moment, not chasing money, but actually chasing the membership's success. Uh, Wendy, your heart with the team and huddle notes is just phenomenal what you guys are doing for crypto. I think if there was a, what was, what's that um, award that Mandela won for in, in oh. science? I think if there was the one, for, yeah, the Nobel in crypto, then you too oh. most probably can get that. Um, so that. yeah, no, thanks for joining us. Um, and for everybody else on here, Remember, stay in touch, speak to the person who invited you, uh, get involved in the channels. When you're in the channels, and Mario said it earlier, it's impossible to always get the calls right. So even on the day trade side, um, in the scalping or when Mario gets a coin and it runs a little bit over time, it's, it's not their fault. I mean, that's what's, what the risk is about in crypto. But if you follow the basics and you don't get greedy, you will make a lot of money. Just think about it. Myself and Donald has been working on it the last couple of days. 1% a day on your portfolio. Go and calculate it and compound exactly. it. And try and exactly. see what happens to your money. Um, so forget about chasing the 6,000% <clears> and all those kind of things, although they are there yeah. and we can play it. But play it safe. Go for 1% to 3% a day. If you can manage that, you will be smiling by the end of the year. Mm. So yeah, from my side, yeah. again, thank you very much. It was fantastic having you all on here. Join us next week, Tuesday again. Marius and Wendy, it's past bedtime, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, thank you for having us. It was a privilege. So, you know, we love being here with you guys and uh, our communities. You know, we, we, we like getting to know you guys. And uh, I've, you know, I've, gotten to know a lot of people all over the world so it's it's just been a pleasure so thank you for having us awesome absolutely thank you thank you all see you next tuesday and we will let you know who's going to be the next surprise guest speaker or topic have a fantastic cool. week and may see the alts soon. and may the best president win i won't <laughs> name mine amen name. amen on that <laughs> all right cheers all cheers bye Cheers, dear Bahot. Cheers, Randy. Cheers, Marius.